What is up guys, Rekus here with another live stream now. Not a video, I want to say a video, but it is a, indeed a live stream. Already two people here, Waffle Waffles and Dan Rondley. Nice that you guys are already in chat. Makes me quite happy. I hope you guys can hear me well. And it's indeed, it is indeed once again an IDA stream. I think uh, <laughs> nowadays those are about 50% of my streams. Uh, mainly because I didn't really stream that often last month. We did like one stream, it was a light as our stream, and um, I liked myself a light as our stream. That was quite fun, and indeed it was. I I like clearing it with the uh, sun you are ears, and uh, surprisingly enough, I still own it. I really plan to sell it, but it is, it is still here. It is still here, the wonderful Precision Giant Kill Defier Sun Devourer ears that we plan to uh, clear for a uh, light as I would indeed did and I wanted to sell it afterwards, but I kept it. <clears throat> maybe one day we will sell it, but maybe we will use it for some more PvP. It will be interesting. Uh, Jonas, Sloy, and again Waffles, <laughs> and Aaron's Wrath, and Aaron's Wrath, thanks for the nice congratulations. I'm very happy I cleared. I uh, finally got the IDA champ. We can, we can have a look at it. Uh, that is, by the way, way nice. I, I don't know uh, who of you guys saw the last stream we did on IDA, uh, the the uh, not so nice one, <laughs> the one that started off with me losing IDA. Um, that one, uh, that one wasn't that nice. This is far better. This is far better. This is way better. I, I really like to look at this. It makes me happy. And a happy stream is a good stream. So uh, that is a nice start. Say hello to my old friend Donkey Baller. Donkey Baller. I like Donkey Baller. Uh, he's an LP. He's a nice guy. Uh, certainly I'm going to greet him. So greetings to you, Donkey Baller. I hope you see the stream as well. <laughs> Not sure if you have time. Colin. Nice that you're here, mate. I'm already starting to get some viewers. I think I'm going to post the stream in the main Idle Heroes Discord as well. Let's see if we can get some viewers going here. Uh, they gave me a nice role some time ago, the Rack Follower role. So if you are in the Idle Heroes Discussion Discord, which is like the main Discord of Idle Heroes, you can uh, go into the, what is it called? The Notification Role Request, which is absolutely at the bottom of, the, of all the channels. And you can get the Rack Follower role which will alert you of any new video that I post, or you can join my Discord and we'll get alerted of anything, of everything I do as well. Jonas, JP Dragon, and Zed, all the guys, all the dudes are here, makes me happy. So that is rather nice. Uh, let's take the Discord as well at everyone. Now, live, you have to live with the clicking for a second. Uh, but that will stop right after, we won't need it anymore. Do you want to take 852 people? 942 if I was correct. Yeah, we want that. So, so let's see what we can do. Uh, with what do we uh, start? Do we start with group 10 or do we go from 1 to 10? What do you guys reckon sh uh, what, is sh what we should do? I am pretty sure we should start off with group 1. <laughs> Shed going wild. Shed going wild. <laughs> Doubting even that I'm live on YouTube. <laughs> Every time you check it, everyone is like, it's like a thousand people writing instantly. That's insane. I would say we start off with group 10, guys. I would say we start off with group 10. Um, and you have to, I have to excuse myself already. Um, I can't pronounce that name. If one of you guys can... Um, Help me with that, I would be happy, <laughs> but let, uh, I, I really can't, it's, I can't read the, those signs, so uh, sorry to my opponent, it was a fair fight, it was a nice fight. Uh, you beat even my old clanmate Onyx, Onyx by the way, uh, he doesn't have that panda symbol, that panda um, profile pic for fun. The man actually invented panda team, which isn't that matter anymore I have to say, but uh, that is the guy that invented panda team, 279 million. Good fight, good lad. Uh, not going to look at the fight. We are going to look the um, the main fight. Uh, me against my opponent. Opponent uh, was running pretty common team. We saw in the last seasons as well. Uh, basically the the double rogue starring Jara core team with like an SFX that he had uh, as a main homeowner and like an um, Espen, 
which is kind of a good team because you can feed the Starwing Jara 4 into one active, which is quite good. Um, when you don't have her as a homeowner, though, you are limited to her native uh, max speed, which can be too slow in some cases, especially when the enemy runs a team like I did. My main team was this wonderful team here, uh, which was running a main homeowner, Mockman and SFX. And um, actually, the Ferric Investor is in a main home as well, and relying on, on the Starwing Jara core, which was quite low on yet uh, basically Collaboration 3. So, not too high, still a pretty decent team, pretty solid, like a mix between Burst and a lot of CC. We have the Aspen CC, we have, in case somebody kills something from us, we have the Ferric Investor CC, and now Starwing Jara CC as well. So, a lot of CC, and you're going to see that in the fights, we can have a look at that. Uh, that was the first one, basically my secondary team. This team, just to trigger, um, just to trigger some crews in the enemy team or some um, gets rid of some carries, something like that. Um, and we can look at the main fight. Where is it? That is the first main fight we're going to look at. Uh, Enrique, nice that you're here. And Alexander, Skylo is here. You didn't miss much. I just started off the stream. We did the. Uh, greetings, I, I said hello to the stream, we posted the link and some stuff, you didn't miss a whole lot. I was just explaining my team and we were just going to look at the first fight, uh, the first main team fight of group 10, which is uh, actually me. <laughs> so that is rather nice, me on the right side defending in that sense. Um, I want to look at this fight a little bit slower, I think we are going to watch the uh, the main fights a little bit slower. Uh, that was, by the way, you could just see it, the first mistake that I built into my team, which... Uh, luckily didn't cost me uh, anything. Um, my Starwing Jara was holding the core, but she was also lowest life, which is of course not great. Uh, and you wouldn't want that if anybody of those opponents really ran like a really strong SFX mid, maybe A and B or something, and could slaughter that. That would have been bad, and we actually lost her in one fight. But you can see, uh, I mean, like even at one speed, that fight is pretty, um, pretty quickly over. Um, yeah. And I mean, like, what was a pretty solid finish, I would say. It was a pretty solid finish. Um, with, like, the SFX doing some damage here, mainly to our Starring Jara. She was surviving, though, and part of that damage is also the counter-attack, and we healed in between. And uh, all of that damage that we're just putting out um, basically killed off this team before it could do anything. And mainly killing off the enemy Starring Jara. So um, this team basically relied on the CC, and there was just nothing that it could do after we finished off that Starwing Jara, so quite nice, uh, quite solid victory, I have to say. I think we watch it again. We watch it again, we can watch it on, on double speed or something. Um, took you long enough, I got IDH about 20 seasons ago, lol, congrats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people were making jokes. <laughs> It was indeed the case. People were making jokes about it because, like, everybody said, "Yeah, you have to win it." I mean, like, you you are in the top rankings and leaderboard of every um, of every PVE game mode, which was uh, true some time ago. And now it's no longer that true. I would say, uh, I'm not in every leaderboard. I'm not not top ten at least. Uh, I'm somewhere. <laughs> But uh, I used to be back then, and I used to get uh, a few place two, a few place four, and. I think my first really close attempt, um, I lost to Zohart. I don't know if you guys still know him, Zohart, pretty big whale, doesn't play anymore. And he bought an uh, account from a player called Ripjol, and that was a huge account, huge whaley account. And he bought that, and basically I started down here in the corner, fought my way up and met him basically here in that, f in that fight, and I lost it. And that was quite sad, because at that time, from the other side, the other contestant was uh, GDP, actually, um, and that guy, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys know him, uh, but he qu had already quit, and Jesus was just playing the count on the side, so it wasn't that strong anymore, and I performed better against Zohart um, than GDP performed against him, and we were running similar teams, so I'm pretty sure I could have beaten GDP and gotten a champion there if it wasn't for Zohart being the group as well. And uh, that wasn't too great. How is Force War going? Um, uh, Speedrun for Avatar, I would say. I think that was what it was called. So, yeah. First fight. Uh, and I would say uh, we just go to Group 9. I think we just go from Group 10 to Group 1 now. Uh, finishing off on Group 1. I'm just going to do that. Uh, we are mainly going to watch the final fights. But also... 
Um, also, some of the, the the other fights, if there are some interesting ones, I saw some uh, cool ones like uh, Ragnarou against DT. That is, of course, a huge fight. We're going to watch that, obviously. Uh, how uh, GDP plays again, I thought. I, I saw him write some stuff in the Discord. I saw him post one video where we did Aspen Dungeon, but nothing else. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, mate. I'm not sure. So this one, again, a final fight. OP Gore versus High Five. Um... Let's see what both of those guys are doing. Um, also, fellow YouTuber here. Well, he's not posting any more videos, but uh, that is actually Get Money Myrick. Um, that just lost the fight against Gore here. So, uh, if you want to check out his channel. I don't know if he's going to post videos again, but he used to be a pretty active YouTuber and I used to watch his stuff all the time. Uh, so, here's the guy. Lost. Um, and then we have OP Gore. Again, pretty similar team. We have like the Starwing Jarrow, we have an Aspen, we have a little bit of sustained stuff with the MFF and um, the Ferric Investor and two Rogues. Um, basically, pretty solid team. And then we have that team as well. Interesting. He has a, he has a, a T4 Mockman here as well. Generally, that is a pretty big account, by the way. Mm. So, Gore 1 against High 5 and High 5, what did High 5 run? High 5 is probably that team. Also, that is interesting. Um, basically, that is kind of a burst team. Um, with the Star Alchemist home score, basically, I guess, I guess using it for stats. And he has an A Aspen. So, I'm pretty eager to see this. This is, uh, I would say, the more off-meta one, I would say, without any, uh, without having to rate it or in any way say it's good or bad. That is a little bit more off-meta, that is something you rather rarely see. Um, what do you think of Eos overall? How useful is she? Um, she struggles a bit to clear SL unless you have a really good copy. Uh, she is decent in PvE as long as you have time to clear the enemies, which is usually not the case. You need some bursts, so Mockman is better. And I think she kind of fell out of meta and out of meta in that, that sense. Uh, she shines in some PvE teams, though, mainly the the um, Holmes teams. So I would say we watch the fights. So that is the main battle, I would say. Yep, that is indeed it. Uh, high five versus Gore. We can already see Gore didn't lose any any um, heroes here, so I reckon there will be some quite strong CC. Hello, Wise Commander! We are resisting, but the fight is hard. I'm Wise Commander for my um, for my force. Yeah, but I, I think we recovered a little bit, Zhao. We recovered a little bit. Oh, already getting CC'd here. High five. Uh, didn't get any active off with this, um, with this MFF. And quite unlucky here. Or was that actually... I think that was a Freya dodge. We have to see, uh, watch that again. We have to watch that again. I think you got Freya dodge. That is that is indeed quite unlucky. Um, but again, Jao Jao, I think we are recovering currently. The situation is a little bit better than it looked at um, like the last days ago. But it's hard. We are getting attacked by three forces at the same time. And uh, by the way, Jao, if you want to complain about it, I found out it's Ika's fault. So uh, you can you can uh, write Ika uh, about that. Jesus, yeah, Jesus here. Mr. Jesus in the chat. We're slowly getting back on our feet. Our main commander here in the rune successor um, force. Yeah, yeah, we're struggling. I don't like the game mode. I have to be honest. I, have, I, I really don't like the game mode. There are some aspects of it I like. I like the boss fights. The boss fights are cool, but like um, this puppet stuff this is oh, this horrible. This is absolutely horrible. I, I I have no idea. It's like overcomplicated. You look at the, you look at all the the modifiers, uh, which we are not going to do. Um, I think uh, that would not be okay. <laughs> Showing everything that we have skilled <laughs> would be kind of uh, spying on myself. So that is something we won't do. But it's like uh, you have. I looked at this list and it's insane. It's like you could print that and it would be as long as uh, any insanely long book and. Uh, I don't I don't think that's great. And those bosses do like everything. I really don't understand it. So let's watch this fight again. I mainly want to see I think uh maybe um, High Five would have had a chance. I think yeah, we can we can't really see it, but I think his Holmes has the fray effect on her and we're going to see something pretty rare. The Aspen dodging 
the home CC just because of the Freya dodge on there. That is quite rare. But uh, Gore has the stronger team. Gore has the stronger team. This Mockman really didn't get too much damage off. Um, yeah, that is uh, that is nothing. That really is nothing. I, I'm quite surprised. So high five for once. Uh, a bit unlucky here, but also uh, with a lot weaker team, actually. And that Aspen, yeah, that didn't quite do a lot. lot. So a pretty strong victory by Gore. Uh, more than well deserved. And I think uh, that is indeed something. That he uh, he got a good win here. Uh, it is fun for people. Uh, it is fun for people to have a game mode where whales are gymed. Uh, technically, it should be community positive, but they need to have forced communication. Yeah, that was something I was uh, thinking about a little bit, and I, I was thinking about making a video uh, because one of the things is whales can't really impact the fight to the extent they usually do. Usually if you have like Ace Championship, for example, and you have a player like Jesus or Artorias in your group, it doesn't really matter what the other guys have because Jesus and Artorias can basically murder every single clan that is out there and they have a huge impact on the fight. If Artorias' main team hits the enemy, then there is not much left. And that is quite different in, um, in Force War, mainly because in Force War you get the durability points based on the damage you do. And the more, uh, the, the higher class of damage you do, there, is, there are those classes, um, the bigger they are, the, the wider span they have. So um, it takes a lot more damage every time to reach the next durability level. And it is capped at 20. And we reached that, I think, on some fights. I, I'm not sure. I think some of our fights already reached 20. And that is sad. I mean, like, how is that going to look in, like, like a month or something? Or two months or, th or three months when we get new power levels, new stuff, upgrade our heroes more. Then we are going to hit 20 every time and it's going to be just sad. Well, for now it's still decently balanced. But, I mean, even the weaker player can hit, like, 4.7 points, something like that. And uh, that sucks. And yeah, forced communication is a, is a thing. For a game mode that strives to be like, we are to, uh, to give you a feeling of we are a force, we try to do um, to defeat the enemy together. Um, the only real means of communication that you have is like pinpoint one of those uh, castles or towers every, um, every few hours and um, then people can attack it or can decide not to. And that is just... Uh, yeah, that is just no way to go forward. We need like an in-game chat um, where people like Jesus that command um, this force can write and can say, yeah, we attack the A21 to, uh, tower. We go there and or we heal now or in four hours you can do that. And uh, that is something that is really missing and that is something that is hurting this game mode. And also they have to fix those leaderboards. We have to see who adds how much durability and that has to be a little bit of a battle. Uh, to um, to an extent to show who can add the most stuff. And I think even that this needs another reward um, pool. Some uh, It either has, has to add to the individual ranking or um, it has to be another s a reward, something worthwhile going for. Give us an avatar, something like that. And uh, make it worth to be the best person to add durability. And we need... Uh, I think more levels of durability it can't just be that you have like five different um, different classes and they add like three, six and whatever durability. It has to be a little bit more differentiated. I think you can say it like that. Um, okay, that was a long talk. <laughs> that was a long talk. Uh, yeah, Force was so complicated that I honestly gave up on optimizing. Luckily, as a, as a weaker player, I can just follow what the commander says and for my... Uh, team and wherever yeah that is one thing it is so complicated that it feels like you optimize your team and then the next day they uh, changed some, uh, something they skilled another thing and suddenly blocked ranger and your team is obsolete again and now you have to optimize it again and then from the boss fights you have to use a different team and basically these these bosses in the towers are so nuanced that you rarely really uh, can go for an optimal team and are happy if you go like 14 17 or something um, actually staying in the top 100 among whales is quite something. That's great, mate. That's great. That makes me happy that you could do it. Uh, something th similar like guild announcement? Definitely. Definitely. Force chat. Only commanders and vice commanders can chat, but everybody can read. 
I think maybe we would need two channels, one for basic chatting and one for commanders and something so that everybody can see what the commanders and vice commanders write. And uh, if they get uh, write something important, like attack this tower, that would be would be really great. There is a sneaky way of communication. If you go to Forceware and look at the guild tech without showing our secret guild tech, you can name the guild tech with messages. Okay. Okay, that is weird. That is weird. I didn't even know that, but I think um, I think so many people don't know that that you can't communicate like that. Um, so next fight, Ursema versus Dada. Let's see what they were running. Uh, okay, what do we have here? Okay, we have a Holmes team. Pretty nice one with an A minus EOS. Yes, an A tier um, SFX as well. And then the A minus Holmes Young, which I'm not sure is really worth it, but uh, certainly interesting. B plus heroes, a B tier carry, and the B Aaron, uh, minus Aranea, and uh, that is certainly quite a nice team. Uh, though I, I'm not sure. I think, I think I would have wanted an S roll in there. I always feel like if I fight those teams or when I fight those teams, um, then I always feel like the S roll. That is really the hero that I struggle with the most, like those heal reductions, and then you suddenly have the damage over time effect from the Star Alchemist Tomes, and due to this heal um, reduction, your Vesa can't outheal the dot, and then you die. And that is, uh, I'm not sure this team can do that, but we will see. We will see. And then we have Ursama uh, with the CC team, Starring Jara core team. I would say that has good chances. I mean, like the Dada team has obviously stronger hero wise and strength wise. So that is a hard time, and I reckon this has a lot of uh, RNG to it. Mm. But I would say this team had some decent chances. So let's see. Yeah, well, didn't do too well. Let's see. Herzliche Glückwünsche. Yeah, it was quite right, Tatsumi. <laughs> nice, now learning German to participate in chat. Ooh, Aspen hitting. For John here, the Aranea was pretty close to dying there. Ah, sadly lacking a little bit of the finishing power. But, oh. <laughs> oh. I think mainly losing to the carry here. That carry uh, was nasty, nasty carry. And you can see the damage reduction here, uh, actually. The Aspen hitting her in turn, uh, turn 1 nearly killed her and turn 2 does nearly nothing. That is actually interesting. <laughs> Wait, you are German. <laughs> Man didn't know. Barrett with the membership set. I didn't even know you were a member, man. Did I miss that? Insane. But also, man, got some good CC off. Ah, the, the, the Ferric investors always... Uh, Oh, that is so sad. I mean, like, he had a pretty good fight, but it was just this little bit of damage missing. There it is. Now it's turn 6. And you basically need to survive to turn 6 if you can't punch through in the early rounds. If you can't punch through on turn 1 or 2, then you need to survive to turn 6, turn 7, um, to really get rid of those layers um, of the of the home score, or of those charges of the home score, uh, to punch through. And I think Urzema's team was just lacking that survivability that it needed to do that um pretty decent heal overall and i feel like the the vessa was just controlled in critical moments and that's really what broke his neck and i think just early on there could have been way more damage if there wasn't this absolutely nasty carry active on turn turn one i think it was even like this one that is now coming up check this out like after the second homes, there it is. This one draining basically the Starwing Jara, draining the um, Rogan, and giving both of those the mark, and basically absolutely murdering the energy feed of the Starwing Jara team, which is quite sad. Um, and now we didn't have an active. Um, that is uh, the reason he got a uh, Holmes active in his face, that also ha had both potions to um, control the enemies. And um, even though he got some decent RNG with the Starwing Jara core, yeah, no heal here, the poison on the Starwing Jara, 
yeah, that was basically a downfall. It was indeed a carry active that uh, that finalized it. I would have loved to see more fights between those two teams. That would have indeed been interesting. We are at least not on five towers anymore fighting for the seventh. Uh, are this are you, Rick, are you German? I am indeed. Yes, I know you are Rush, but I always saw your name with like the 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 um, the speed roll that we have for the for the fastest viewer, and I thought like okay, here's the fastest viewer, and I didn't notice that you had member. Oh wait, didn't you say you don't have it connected to a Discord? I think that was it. That was it. Okay. Two weeks ago or something. Yeah, Skylo peer pressure. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, if I had known that you had time, I wouldn't have done it together. I honestly thought in, about asking you in the recent days, but then um, but then I thought you were busy with like all the stuff in Force Wars, so I didn't want to ask. <laughs> Maybe we can do it together next time. Er hat einen sehr deutschen Akzent. Is that the case? I honestly hope that I don't, but like, yeah. Um, so Dada and Ursema here with a quite an interesting fight that um, mainly mainly Kerry decided interesting enough. Uh, Kerry quite a strong hero. I will make a video about Kerry quite soon. Uh, but quite interesting to see that this fight um, was decided by this Kerry. Uh, still quite uh, wondering um, how many fights Ursema would have won against this team. That was just the case of IDA bet RNG. I, I, I would suppose... Um, the, the win rate isn't quite as bad as this was looking. So, in any way, uh, congratulations to... Not me. That is me. That is not Dada. Uh, that is Gore. We are group 8. Congratulations to Dada for the win. Another well-deserved win in uh, IDA. So that is quite nice. Yeah, we had multiple assaults on day 1. On average, everyone should have had one serious assault. Some teams had no attacks. Yeah... And there are some stupid things as well. Um, one of the things I really don't like, and that is quite stupid, like the there is a dark blue team, I think, and they only have borders to two other forces. <laughs> like everybody has borders to three forces, but that one spawn is just OP. Just two uh, borders to two forces, so you can attack one of them, leave the other one alone, and you will just chill and uh, have pretty good chances at at least not losing. So that is quite nice. Uh, it's no problem, right? Kids are still up, so time wouldn't be good right now. Well, if you are ever interested, we can do it at a later time. I mean, those fights are up for uh, some more time. I think Battle of the Best ends, and then they are up for still one more day or something. So that would be an option if you if you if you want to. I don't I don't force you. Um, God Domain faced four forces day one. <laughs> that is insane. It's a wrench of free to play here. <laughs> Oh, and there we have him. The man himself, Mr. Jesus, is here. Versus Kenshin. So let's see what he's running. Uh, he's running S-tier heroes. <laughs> so, uh, again, he's also running a Starving Jara core. Interesting. I was too switching to that, so that is quite cool. And, of course, A+. Plus. I remember him buying this uh, this uh, MFF, by the way, and, and that he got into a bidding battle, and I'm not sure it was against Sorbitol, but uh, against some guild member, at least, so that was quite funny. Uh, always a risk, by the way, if you're an Omega project, that you're bidding against one of your guild members, and there's really nothing you can do about it. And... Um, yeah, quite a nice team against six transcendence zero team uh, becoming more common in the upper echelon of uh, of teams, um, and running the mockman in the front row. So that is interesting. I'm pretty eager to see that. And then we have Kenshin, and Kenshin is running. Which one is the main team? This one, right? This one should be the main team. Three carries. Okay. Wait, which one is the main team? <laughs> I don't even know. No, this one is not the main team, isn't it? I don't think so. Uh, probably this one, right? This one looks like a main team. The the triple panda are just a bit too wild, I, f I feel. Then we have triple rogue. I have no earthly idea which is the main team, and it's against Jesus, so he's probably going to get slaughtered, so we will never know. <laughs> we will never know what is the main team. Maybe you can... Uh, wait, wait, let's take a look at one of the earlier fights and see which of his teams actually got the wins. Uh... 
Well, this one, barely. That was the one I, I, I thought was the main team. It was against Sorb. <laughs> well, it's either Sorb or, Re or Ragnaru. <laughs> one of those two. That is, those are the guys you bid against. That is always one of them. But we didn't know it at that time. I remember you writing in chat a, a bit later and Sorb was writing that he bid on it as well. And I think you got up to uh, quite <laughs> an amount of story. Uh, unfortunately, you missed Kenshin beating, beating Andy. Oh, that was quite insane. I thought about making like a, a compilation of the best frights from yesterday. So um, I thought about doing that, but um, decided to go instead and we didn't have too much time. Um, so let's see what Jesus is actually doing. I think uh, we are just going to watch all of those fights, I reckon. Let's start. Let's let's just start with the first team. Kenshin has an interesting selection of teams. It looks like he put quite a lot of effort into setting those up. So uh, I, I think we, we just take a look at it. Interesting. The energy star wing genre. Jesus going with the absolute Rayleigh stuff. Just bursting the enemy down. <laughs> this seems to be the, the idea of the team. To just burst the enemy to hell. Probably using Snick Snow Art. Yeah. Probably using Six Snow Art, I would reckon. Yeah, with ST heroes, if you have that quality of heroes, you can really get away with that. And uh, it is it is not even like a getting away with that in, in a sense that it's quite bad. It's actually quite good. It's quite insane. If you've ever fought a team of that hero quality, it feels so stupid. You just feel so slow because your, your snow hearts, they slow something and then the other heroes are still faster than your heroes. So that is, that is indeed... Um, that is indeed quite stupid. Did Lord Eric lose to someone with 250 million less pearl than him? I'm not quite sure. Five uh, snow arts in that team. What didn't have a snow art? Maybe we see it in the next fight. Maybe we see it in the next fight. Where does Jesus not run a snow art? Uh, probably one of them is Demon Bell or something? I don't see it. I don't see it, my man. I don't see it. But your team is winning. <laughs> As expected, your team is winning. Quite the slaughtering. I mean, like, so nice heroes. Like this SS Ferrican Vessel. I know Ragnar would kill for that. The SS Aspen, which is also quite nice. And then those A+. Plus. And the SS um, Mockman is one of the best Mockmans that is available on the market. Probably only beaten by, um, by Atorius. SSS Mockman, which is, of course, uh, impeccable. It's insane. So, last one, um, which I'm sure is the main team. I'm sure the chat saw. <laughs> no, he says that I didn't see it. I really didn't, though. I really didn't. So, who in chat saw it? Who in chat saw which of Jesus heroes doesn't run a snow heart? I have to watch it again now. I have to watch it again now. Do we do one speed? We can do one speed. So this one did an active, right? Or did it? Yeah. This one did an active? This one didn't! Receptor. Receptor? Receptor. I reckon Receptor. Uh, what do you guys think the new artifact will give? That is interesting. That is interesting. I'm actually not sure at all. I can't really imagine it gives us a new stat. I would hope to it to be a defensive artifact, actually. Um, because the last one we got was actually Melodic Strings with Huge Burst, and before that, what did we get before that? Oh, this was, was that Crown? Was that Crown? I think that was Crown. Receptor in one of the years before that, and before that was KOG. Um, so, I mean, what do we have to say, guys? What do we have to say? Uh, I think, I'm, I'm waiting, actually, for the season where we will see Atorius versus Jesus. That will be cool. That will be cool. That will be a video. <laughs> I'm not going to show that on stream. <laughs> we are going to make a video. Yeah, I think it's Aspen Rui. Lofa, yes, he said it. Lofa, yes, it is. I didn't confirm if it's Rui. That is typical Jesus. A little bit of a secret. <laughs> but um, it is It is indeed not a snow heart on him. And it's actually quite smart, because like Lofa, if he CCs the back row, that can save you a lot of damage, because up to four heroes in the enemy team can no longer crit, and if you manage to kill something, then the rest of the heroes can't crit as well. This group, I saw this group, and this group confused me, because every single group we saw up until now had OP members, and I don't see OP members. Like there's nobody, there's Sharon, there's Shoviness, there is Martin, there is a Killer, 
Buddy Love, Chris, Mitsu and GT and the we don't have any OP members. Where are the OP members in group 6? <laughs> like, that is so... so unrealistic. I th maybe somebody was kicked out by Sharon before. I mean, the guy is strong, we said that before. Uh, that could have happened many times as I often forget about the end of IDA. Yeah, indeed. I often do that as well. But I always notice two days before that when um, when Daiko texts me. And uh, when he texts me, I look at that and I'm like, like, okay, I don't know, it's like 300 points or something <laughs> that I need to do. And then I waste like 400 tickets or something. Uh, and that is quite insane. So we now didn't look at the team. So uh, main team... The Panda team. Sharon again with the Panda team. I think he's like the last remaining Panda team user. Um, but it's cool. I mean, like, he builds a top notch Panda team. That is insane. I mean, probably uh, best team Unix ever saw. And running the Freya core. I think Freya core is kind of an interesting choice. I would have wondered if SQH core was interesting for that. SQH core is quite cool with some heal and other stuff. Um, I always wondered if maybe, I mean, like, probably they won't find a place for it unless you uh, swap out the SQH, which limits your offensive capabilities. But uh, um, Star Alchemist Tomes always always looked like something that would be cool in a Panda team. But it's about the, uh, the slot, which who do you would you sacrifice for that? Maybe the SDE, but that is a little bit less damage. Well, it's difficult. But I like the Panda team. If he finds another A Panda, that will look even better. But he has A plus, uh, Ferrokin Vesa A plus. Uh, Eos and yes, General has a lot of A plus heroes, and I like that. So, Chris, um, I get reckon this one looks a little bit like mine with the uh, with the six transcendence heroes, another six transcendence heroes team making it to the finals. That's interesting. We didn't see those like one or two seasons ago. Those were quite a uh, rare one or two seasons ago. One or two seasons, I think one season ago, was like mainly starring Jara CC teams and uh, Star Alchemist Holmes teams. And we can see a little bit of a shift towards six Transcendence Hero teams here. So those might become the new meta. They have been meta on iOS for quite some time. If you are there are iOS players in chat, uh, you can attest to that. That is uh, definitely the case. Uh, but Chris here from Core with huge team. Jesus, we should poach that guy. Look at that. A plus Vesa, A plus Mokman, an A minus Starving Jara overall, a good P plus copy. Chris, if you if you hear that, uh, write me a message. We can find a place for you, I guess. <laughs> no poaching live on stream, guys. That is the most dangerous ones. Those are the most dangerous ones. <laughs> poaching live on stream. And Jesus has to use any means of communication. If anyone here is in Rune Successor, which is my force as well, uh, we are aiming to do 7.5% on Fort A10 before reset if you have attacks left. That is a lot of ace. It indeed is, right? It indeed is. Core hiding now are their good players from us. Um, but like, this is nice. A plus Mockman, A plus. This guy can do something. Uh, let's actually take a look how far he is in campaign. Let's check that out. Uh, was he earlier than me? Did he already clear? Chris, here he is! 4610! Cleared right after me. Look at that! Somebody hooked this guy up! <laughs> he passed Rose. Somebody hooked this guy up. He has to come to OP. He's in the wrong clan, he's in core. How did he get there? So that is interesting. Sadly lost to Sharon. Sharon still a little bit stronger. And we will see Panda team versus six transcendence hero team. I would have actually thought that this team would have a chance. But he's running Ferric and Vesa Quai. I, th I think the uh, the better uh, selection for a core would have been the Starring Jara core. Starring Jara core is quite strong, I feel like. And against a team like this, um, this Panda team, that could have been quite interesting. So let's see the fight. Um, I'm actually pretty eager to see this. Yeah, Sharon's um, Sun Devourer Eos. Just insane how much damage that makes. Um, but I feel like, is he running enough Snow Hearts? Is he run even running Snow Hearts at all? It doesn't look like Snow Hearts. There are no snow effects anywhere here. Did he just get none? 
Or is he really not using Snow? That is a melodic strings. I mean, like, that is that is really nice damage. Killed the Eos. That is really nice damage. But those heroes are rather squishy. Are very squishy, actually. Huh. Don't really see what's going on there. Weird. I mean, the Eos is now going to do her damage over time effect, and that is going to kill half the team, probably. Or like four? I would have guessed even a little bit more than that. But still, no snow art. Hmm. Is that the demon bell? It isn't. Or is it? Wait. Yeah, it is a demon bell. He's running demon bells. I think he would have won if those were snow arts. I think he would have won if those were snow arts. And probably has the last sublimation for Mokman as well. Hmm. I think that could have been a win, Chris. I think you should look into getting some snow arts because that panda team was super slow. If you could have uh, CC'd that, that would have been an easy win. That would have been an easy win, mate. I'm quite sure of that. So I think we're going to skip the rest of the fight. Um, Mockman with insane damage. We have to say that. That is really that is really good damage. But I'm always surprised by Sharon's uh, Sunday Bower Eos. That thing is nasty. Nasty. Absolutely nasty. Um, overall, I'm not too happy with the performance of the Penas. I feel like Sharon is mainly winning his fights because of those uh, of this insane bursty um, Sun Devourer Eos, insane bursty um, Fairy Convessa, and I'm not sure he could win a fight if he's facing somebody of these strong OP players. And I'm not sure those pandas help him. Like, they just got burst down before they could do anything, and I'm not sure we are still in the meta for using pandas. I think that time is over. I think that time is over, actually. Um... One or two seasons, I reckon, and he's going to um, going to fall against somebody way weaker with a way weaker team, with some CC team or something that gets a lucky CC on his uh, Sunnyvore Eos. And um, those pandas just can't provide what another strong transcendence hero would have provided. Like if you put an Aronia in there, if you put uh, Lord of Death Asriel in there, that could have been so strong. And Sharon is a strong player, and he has this. He has the heroes, and I think he should just make use of that to uh, even win more fights. Anyhow, another win for Sharon, another IDHM for Sharon, and we want to congratul uh, congratulate him on that. And I'm happy um, he's still running the Panda team, even though it's not the most effective thing. I still like it. I still like that he's doing it, and that's cool. So, group 5, actually with a first-time winner. So, similar as me, I, I got my first IDA win now. And that is Rose um, winning against... Um, um, <laughs> last time I said Ubaita, and uh, that would be the German way to say it. But uh, I was told it is wrong, and he didn't tell me how to pronounce it right. <laughs> they all just said that I pronounce it like her. And he doesn't bite her, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but I like the guy. He got top 10 as well. We uh, found last season. Barrett, my friend, with the $20. <laughs> Man. <laughs> That's insane, mate. Thanks, Skylo said so. <laughs> Skylo. Are you forcing Barrett to give me money? <laughs> That's insane, mate. <laughs> That's insane. Definitely making my day here. Definitely making my day. And I, I'm i pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you can get the one second. If you guys don't know it, we're making a comp little competition in the Discord server. You can click on the videos the fastest and uh, Barrett was the guy that was the fastest viewer until quite recently Skylo got the better of him and got the two second click uh, on that video. And I'm sure one day Barrett will get the one second. Queenie in the chats. Happy that you're here. Quite nice to see you, Jacob. Yeah, 20 bucks. I've never seen that. It's like quite a nice orange. That's quite cool. I like it. I like it. Thanks, mate. So let's look at Rose now. Uh, Rose is actually also quite a cool guy. Quite like to, um, to chat with him. He writes me sometimes, so that's cool. Uh, always wanted to buy my Mockman, by the way. 
he and Franco both want to buy my Mockman, and I never wanted to sell it. And uh, I think at one point they got quite annoyed by. But I told Rose his Mockman is better than mine. It, it, not because of the stats, but he has such a uh, nice role. He has way better bonus stats than me, and uh, he should be happy with it. Running a Crucium. Um, no awakening on it, quite interesting. I mean, you can get like a nice B tier damage reduction, control precision, uh, cruising the market, so that is maybe something to look into. It can help quite a lot with survivability. And then he's running Aranir, he's running an Aspen, um, Mockman, and we have a Ferrican Vessa with two rogues. It looks like a burst team. It looks like a burst team, and the sustain elements are not the classical Mystic Fairy Fairy, but he used Aranea, so I'm interested to see that. I uh, wouldn't be surprised uh, if that Aspen didn't really exist for CC. Um, but Aspen Core, so I'm eager to see that. And then we have Ubaita, and I've still no idea uh, how to pronounce that name. Uh, he doesn't bite people. Just that's something I wanted to say, you guys, and he's a nice guy. Um, with the Starving Jarakor, pretty similar team, but not... Um, that is what I said. It's like, usually it's the Mystic Fairy Freya, and here uh, for Rose it was the Aranea. So we get the battle between Mystic Fairy Freya and Aranea, by the way. Oh, that's also Freya! Wait, you are right. That's also Freya. That is a mirror match. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure. I thought that was a new skin-like. But it is indeed, isn't it? I have the other skin as well. Wait. It is. It really is. Like, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You guys are right. I was wrong. It is also Mystic Furry Freya. Ika was apparently bitten by Ubaita. Okay. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I said that uh, Ubaita doesn't bite. Apparently he does. <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> Rose. You bet him. Maybe that's a good new name. You bet him. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, mirror match here. Ubaita versus Rose. They are so similar. Oh, not really a mirror match. I guess like uh, Rose is using Aspen and uh, Ubaita is using the Starring Jara. And both have the individual core activate. That is actually quite the cool fight. I like that. That we're going to see Aspen and Starring Jara core in action. And, uh, well, we're not going... <laughs> that was nasty. That was such, uh, such nasty positioning RNG by Rose. Like having that Starwing Jara directly in front of the Aspen that does an active skill on her and putting her just in the live position to just get one shot and activate the extra damage. <laughs> Let's watch that again. That was a nasty fight. But the winner, of course, is the faster Mockman. And that is that is the case here, the faster Mockman. I got really good stuff. And then, of course, here the extra damage slaughtering the Starring Jara and the Mockman. Yeah. Oh, that was a nasty one, Rose. That was a nasty one. Rose with the faster Mockman. So that was basically all of the story. But the fight! Holy hell, that was a massacre. That was a massacre. Uh, Well-deserved win by Rose. We don't really have to see anything in the rest of the fight. So, well-deserved victory by Rose. Uh, first time winner of the IDA Championship. So we want to congratulate even more at this point. Quite happy that you uh, finally got it, mate. Uh, even uh, winning here, oh, that was Ubaita. Winning against Daddy, and Daddy winning against M. So quite a cool people, a lot of cool people here. So group four, uh, Gene versus Eru, but it's a surprise win. A um, lot of people bet on Eru or thought Eru would win, and it was indeed Gene. And Gene even winning against Hyde here. So uh, Gene on quite a victory streak, um, and uh, definitely insane. I wonder what he's running. So let's take a look at that. So that is the main team, and that is something we saw before. Uh, one of the most meta teams, actually, at this point, with the two rogues um, and the uh, two main homeowners being Mockman and Starwing Jar, which is a little bit difficult to set up, considering Starwing Jar is usually the slot for Tenant for Mockman. So uh, that is a little bit annoying. I, th I think she's so she should be slot for Tenant, I, if I don't remember that wrong. But um, 
that is still quite interesting. And what I like though, guys, I don't know if you noticed that, um, there are a lot of people with B tier heroes in the um, in the IDA Championship. It's not even always having about having those S tier heroes or A tier heroes. Well, of course that helps indeed, but we got an IDA champ here, and man doesn't have a B an A tier. That is just with B tiers, guys. So not always needed to have an have an B tier to be successful. Um, quite nice winning against high tier what a tight run you can see hydran wow that is uh that is a really whaley team certainly is um with the homes and then again the c team at the same time so it's a little bit of a mix here um i'm not going to look at that actually i want to see what arrow run arrow ran only two teams so that makes it easy to see um we have a panda team in the first log which is kind of there i guess to um, get rid of some of the weaker opponents to get rid of crews and some stuff and then we he ran a homes team so let's see that fight that is something i also really care for uh and there is basically our main battle we don't have a lot of battles just three fights and those cc teams are often rather good against uh teams like the one that Eero is running here um mainly because we have the burst from the mockman we can get rid of like a Holmes or arnea quite early get an early kill in some situations but um those Holmes teams often tend to have very little active heroes on the board like the the astral will kill himself the carry is dead and that leaves you with four heroes if you can get a kill on one of those um that leaves three and if now the uh, starving jara quad triggers there isn't much to choose from basically if it hits the homes that is huge if it hits aronia that's huge if it hits fairy converse that's huge basically every single time you trigger the starving jara quad that is huge and some insane damage coming here from the starving jara actually i think it was i'm pretty eager to see the damage screen here and of course that astral and that carry will revive but that astral just seems a little bit too weak to be a real threat here to that pretty wonderful team that gene built here the rogue is finishing up on that fairy queen vessel and that basically leaves nothing the Ezreal alone can't do anything um mockman doing some really good damage seems to be main homeowner and fairy queen vessel there the, uh, the gene seems to have a good amount of ci and we can see that was indeed absolute slaughtering the starring jara with some really good damage here starring jara cross lurton the helping against those uh sahi teams so that is quite a nice one pretty good victory from gene um against a pretty strong group even i don't like how it resets us every time against a strong group with Haid, uh jair we have aru in here so that was quite a good victory congratulations to gene uh did you win i don't know i couldn't watch the stream nx cakes yeah i finally won my first IDA championship in group 10 it will show up a few more times I guess because we're reset every time to that B tier is the way to go uh, yeah it seems like uh, it is still a viable option even though there are certainly a lot of A tier heroes on the market and in the teams of people um, we can still run B tier so group 3 and Oh, that is, the, that is the nice one. That is the one where I really care for a lot of matches because there are strong matches in that group. Um, I think that is one of the strongest group that we have ever seen in IDA, actually. Um, it's basically just lacking Jesus and would be a perfect massacre. And then we could just watch this group, basically. For, for all the top tier fights, we could watch that group. Um, first of all, do we have here? We have Jaded, OP member. We have Ragnaru. Uh, which is also one of the biggest whales and uh, leader of pillars. We have DT, the main whale of core, um, level 276, but um, this vessel, 18 million attack. Insane. Insane. I can have a look at his tenants now. <laughs> S3, S4, S heroes. Man is stacked. Insane account. And that wasn't enough to win, obviously, because you have, uh, you have Atorias in this team, and uh, Atorias doing the one team flex. The one team flex. He's doing the Daiko. The Daiko move. <laughs> Just setting up one team. And still 441 million. <laughs> that is insane. Even with, also with the A Aronia. That is an Aronia, though. I'm sure. Woodworks in this team. 
from Utopia has been in Paragon before. Good guildmate of mine, he was in Paragon 1 together with me. Good guy, good lad, really like him. Um, also comes from the area, by the way. So, uh, he's he's uh, living in the same country as me. Not no Germany like uh, North Rhine-Westphalia, by the way. Well, that is where I live. It was, doesn't really tell you anything because it's like a quarter of Germany lives there about. So quite big KDL in here and uh, again I can't pronounce that name I'm quite sorry and Neo as well S48 S48 guy Helios um, so also quite a strong player has to face me in um, in uh, free team up again so every every week he has to face me in free team up so I'm quite sorry <laughs> mate so uh, and now he had DT in Battle of the Best, but still, it's immortalized. He got in the top eight, so that's some uh, quite nice. Uh, so where are we going to start off? I want to watch more than one fight in this group. Um, I think the main fights that I care for is DT versus Ragnaru and DT versus Artorias. Those are the two that we are going to look at. Um, we watched the KDL fight last time, um, so that is, that is shall not be it. But uh, like P Ragnaru against DT, that is a fight I really care for. And uh, again, the Artorias versus DT. I would say we start off with Ragnar versus DT. Let's look at what Rag is running. Weird stuff. He's running weird stuff. <laughs> like three years ago, that would have been wailing to show off those Ada copies, but no. So he has like an SS Mockman, and he's not running at the main team. He's not running a Hopes team. By the way, guys, that Vesha. I wanted to buy that Vessa. I wanted to buy that Vessa and he used my sleepiness against me and bought it. It was like 6 a.m. in the morning and uh, I, I I bit on that Vessa the day before and I wake, woke up at 6 a.m. in the morning and usually I have like a few more minutes before I can go, uh, before I have to go to work and uh, do some stuff there. Um, so I, I took a gander and took a look at the auction house and checked and saw okay yeah you, you still have the highest bid on that vessel and then i intended to be available shortly before the auction ended and i absolutely fell asleep and i slept like another hour or something and i was way late for work but uh, i can arrive to work whenever i want so that didn't really matter um but the the, the way meaner part of it was i w woke up to see that somebody had bought that Vessa and that, that I didn't get it and I wanted to have it so, so much. And later I found out that Ragnaru, the, the Ragnaru himself, bought that Vessa. And I really still want that Vessa, to be honest. <laughs> and I, I wrote him a message and he told me, yeah, I, I will likely sell it. I don't even want it. And some of that made me even more angry. Because, like, why did you buy it when you didn't want it? He wants an ST Vessa. I can understand that, of course. But, like... Give me back my Vessa. Alamoy, <laughs> oh, Rack bought a 200k hero just to use in backline like a noob. That's so funny. None of the way it's know how to use the hero they spent four grand on. Um, Well, I, I don't know. Rack played the game for some time. I don't know how capable he is. He's, let's a lot of his stuff. Um, get, um, let low, let's lowly do a lot of his stuff so that it is probably done. <laughs> because lowly does it. Lowly can definitely play the game. Um, and Rack is a nice guy. I was joking, obviously. Irak is a really nice guy. I like him. And um, I think he led Pillars quite well for quite some time. He has a nice account. We see a lot of A-plus heroes. Uh, one too many of those. So uh, I think all those ST heroes, it doesn't fit in. You should sell it, Ragnarok. And DT. And DT is really somebody that focuses on one hero. And that one hero is definitely Vesa with the 18 million attack. Like, insane. Never saw that much attack. It's insane. Uh, Idle Hero's real job. Uh, more than real job? No. No, no, no. Uh, I woke up like 10 minutes before the time I usually wake up. So it's like, it's not really prioritizing Idle Hero's. Uh, my real job is just... Um, I can't really tell you a lot about it. So, so like, it's, uh, it will always, always be in the background. That's kind of the thing. I can tell you a lot about Idle Hero's, but nothing about my job. So... Um, that's why I will always prioritize idle heroes in the stories. And it will sound a bit like that. But um, I couldn't pay for idle heroes if I didn't have a proper job, wouldn't I? So that is another story. Uh, quite the interesting team here. Yeah, I didn't see uh, 
Is that even his main team? That is so weird. Uh, I didn't see an, a, an ATD in a team for quite some time. Is that kind of looks like a CC team. I mean, like, whatever. I have no idea. <laughs> Let's watch it. Uh, so that's it. Ragnar nearly losing here. I love it. I love when, like, one of those teams that I, I think might be a little bit crappy, to be honest, just punches through and beats a, a more meta or a full meta team like this. So let's let's take a look at that. Top secret government spy. Um, well, you kind of found out. So I guess you guys will never see Skylo again. I'm pretty sorry. <laughs> but he found out. I'm a secret government spy. It's bursty. It is really bursty. Energy artifact on the ATD. Um, bursting down, uh, well, uh, bursting down the carry for now. But there are a lot of AOE hits in there, so I reckon it will discharge the charges of the um, Star Alchemist Homescore quite quickly. Um, we have like at least four AOE hitters in here. So that will be quite fast. Artorias! <laughs> it's just the group. It's just the group, mate. It's just your group um, that we are now watching. We're just watching DT versus uh, Ragnarou now. And afterwards it will be DT versus... Uh, uh, Ragn DT or Ragnarou was even winning. I forgot. Whoever against Artorias. <laughs> <And this co> <laughs> Whoever will win will lose against Artorias. So it's uh, it doesn't really matter, I guess, guys. Just past 100 viewers. That is quite interesting. Man, this fight does, does take forever indeed. I think we are going to do double speed. Let's do double speed. Which is uh, triple speed because speed is still bugged. It's really nothing happening here. DT's team still seems like a like a sustained team. Even though for the first second I thought it was be, would be more bursty. Now a little bit more sustainy. I guess. Uh, then again, if he has the sublimations for uh, for S model, then um, he gets a lot of all damage dealt as well. You can't really see it because all damage dealt does not have one of those blue symbols. Those counter attacks from Queen make it take forever. That was uh, damage over time. And now the S model starting to do some real burst. Look at that S model damage, and now the S model is gone. And that was the Ferrokin Vessel, the legendary Ferrokin Vessel with 18 million attack. Uh. I mean, the Holmes is gone, so it's really about who can finish the enemy first. And I think now on the left side, Ragnaru has the upper hand here, considering he has MFF and Aranea, which will give him a ton of damage reduce and all damage reduce, uh, which might just help. And the Star Alchemist home score lasts for like six rounds, so that is insane. Uh, he has 17 million tech leader. Oh, it was not 18, it was just 17. Um... But like it's it's um, it's like a 17 million um, attack vessel. It's insane. Is it again a carry deciding the fate of the enemy? Uh, the Asmunda is still getting out damaged by the by the Ferrokin vessel though, and of course we have the huge 17 million attack vessel doing the most uh, damage here. I'm not sure. I think this team did a lot better than I thought against this Star Alchemist Holmes team. I'm not quite sure what the winning condition is, though. So um, that is something. He mentioned he has 18 million attacks now. It is 18 now. See, I was right, Aika. I was right. She doubted me. I think both people had an interesting had an interesting team here. Um, so who's the winner now? It is DT. Oh. I didn't see the last fight. I thought like, okay, main battle was won by Ragnaru. And that should be it. Ragnaru's team lost against one of those secondary teams. Insane. That is really insane. Kel! Epic supporter! That is quite nice. Thanks, mate. Thanks for the support. Really appreciate it. Um, make sure to link your Discord. 
with your YouTube to get all the nice Discord benefits that we have. And um, also make sure if you, after you've linked it, we have a channel called Member Videos and you can check out all of the member videos I did. There are some videos that are not available for normal viewers that are just for members and you can check those out. All the older ones as well and some of those are pretty interesting, I think. So that is something to look forward to. Um, so now DT actually with the win, ever so clutch. And now can we watch round nine? Round nine is this one. But oh, that is actually cool, right? Like two heroes versus six and one of them is an Espen Homo at S tier. Yeah, we can. We can, Henrik. That is cool. Oh, yeah, to re up. I, wa I was thinking you already had one, one day. Atrorius coming in clutch with the support as well. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. That is so nice of you. And we are going to watch your fight soon as well. Yeah, that is insane. If you don't really have the attack to punch through, those guys are insanely tanky with these shields. And it's turn two, so neither of those heroes can take crit damage. The uh, Aranea is now um, protected. Barret! I forgot to send this message when I subbed. <laughs> that looks so nice now. Like three, um, three memberships right below each other. That is insane. That is really insane. I can see the tankiness here just going in clutch. The Aronia actually doing a lot of damage. Aspen doing his best to uh, prevent crit, but like those two guys have heal. They have heal. The Aspen still with, with pretty decent burst actually. But now we have another Ferric Investor active, so now we are going to get shields again. <laughs> that is insane. 80 minute attack is very much. It is indeed very much. That is the most amount of attack that I've ever seen on a hero and is hardly even possible right now. Uh, you have to have tree levels on all of your tenants. High tree levels on all of your tenants. That really makes it possible and um, yeah, it's insane. If you want to go for like SE damage, uh, the Vessa of DT is certainly the strongest hero that I know um, to deal damage in SE. And that is a, certainly an interesting fight as well. Seen like the S tier Aspen not being able to kill uh, to kill this Vessa or this Aronia, and we even had an A plus SFX here, which was just a tenant. <laughs> Look at that! That thing is V three plus attack. Need all those extra mats so I can make all my Ferric Investor tenants T five to complete. Yeah, but you have these uh, the Stella. You have the Stella Atorius, and that is already like that is so far ahead of me. Like having the Stella to actually um, use all the spiritual essence that you get. That is really insane. Need hammers that work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like hammers. Um, I tried to roll my Mockman and my, and my SFX and I didn't make a video about it this time. And if I did, that would have been a rage video, guys. That would have been a rage video. I got one giant killer roll and basically I currently have... Giant Killer, Holy Armor and Control Immunity offset on my Mockman. And I rerolled that and I tried to get something good. And what I got was Giant Killer, Holy Armor heal effect. And I felt quite trolled. I really felt quite trolled. So, um, yeah, that is that that was indeed a little bit stupid. So, uh, DT here with the nice win, a little bit clutch, a little bit close, but still a win. We are in group three already. And uh, now he has to face the end boss. Sadly, this one was doomed to be lost by DT, and um, he got a kill. It's actually a victory. It's actually a victory in my mind. I mean, like, he got a kill. He killed an SSS hero. <laughs> Something <laughs> nearly no player has ever done killing an SSS hero. So... Uh, that is insane. I still think it's funny. There are like four SSS heroes in the game and there are three in this team. <laughs> so that's 75% of all SSS heroes right there. Right there, guys. So let's see that fight. Actually, like the the uh, the biggest battle of, of uh, heroes, of high tier quality heroes in that game on the right side. We have obviously have Atorius. Mockman coming in clutch, getting some good, um, good, um, good chases actually. Those were some good chases. Can't really complain about that. Uh, the Ferric Investor getting some good CC here. 
I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that uh, DT indeed has the proper sublimations on the Ferro Converse as well. So there is some nice, um, there are some nice defensive benefits to it. That's probably why it could survive the first round so well. Um, but I, what I really like here, did you see those numbers from those uh, counterattacks, like 207 million? It's just a casual 207 million counterattack. Ooh, the S model, nearly killing off three heroes. Insane. Backline Mockman again. Backline Mockman can be good, Aika. Don't underestimate it. You tend to do that. Backline Mockman can be good. Can be very good, especially if you have a different meta than on iOS. You can't compare the iOS meta to what we do on Android. Android is, is in my opinion, from what I see, it's always a bit more bursty than iOS. We're doing a little bit more burst. We are doing fast CC and that stuff, and it can be very good to have fast damage. And the back uh, front row Mockman doesn't provide fast damage. It really doesn't. So um, that is another thing that we, you should look out for. Uh, that is not the same as on iOS. We are doing different things. And like, look at that damage, guys. Look at that damage. That is insane. That is really insane. Heal Ferrokin Vessa. His Ferrokin Vessa even healing more than uh, DTs, despite DTs having way more attack. The Math Witch. <laughs> so. Pretty good fight. I mean, you can watch the second one as well. Now without a Mockman, actually. Let's see what this, uh, this team does without a Mockman. Still a huge team. Doesn't change it. And then the SDE. Ooh. Slaughtering here. <laughs> it just looked so funny. That just looked so funny seeing those four heroes die and we're just watching the fights in slow speed. Uh, somebody said it last time. Somebody said like let's watch the fight a little bit slower, it's hard to see stuff. And I watched it again and I thought like okay we had we did some commentary, we did some stuff, but um really seeing it and seeing some stuff um it, it, it's a little bit more interesting. Yeah, it can kill the full backline in one round, but I can also get full CC'd in one round and then I'm dead. And I would rather have an instant kill on a frontline Starving Jara than having a dead backline with two rogues or something that I might just get and not have a guarantee on it. Uh, it is not more consistent versus CC, Aika. It is definitely not more consistent versus CC. Because if your Mockman is CC'd, then he doesn't counterattack anymore. <laughs> that doesn't help you do any damage. So, Alan! Or Alan? Not sure. Not sure if it's Alan or Alan, but whatever. Um, if that profile pick and that frame and being on that position with a uh, Holmes team, if that is something you remember, then that might be uh, the reason for that might be that uh, this is the old Mont account. Alan or Alan is actually the guy that bought the old Mont account and Mont, um, I think he has been, he has been IDHM for three seasons in a row. Something like that. It's a little bit like Daiko. Though Daiko lost this time. He lost this time. Um, so, versus Krizzy from Renegade. Has an interesting first team. I like it. Look, it's an E5 Sigmund. I forgot the name. Is that Barrier or King Barton or what is that? I don't know the skin. Then we have a Horus. We have a Valkyrie. This guy really went for some fun heroes. That's quite cool. I like it. And we have the six Transcendence heroes. Um, uh, team again. That is quite nice. Six Transcendence Zero team again with the Starwing Jara Core. Starwing Jara Core becoming a little bit more meta. And um, in the fin uh, final fights, we have seen like four, five, six, um, six Transcendence Zero teams. So definitely look into that, guys. I think it's cool. King Barton? It's King Barton? <laughs> so that is interesting. I think we were going to watch the first fight. Even though it is, uh, it doesn't have any chance, um, this team. I want to see the first fight. And I think you guys want to. Ah, it's full unbending will. And then we have the counterattack. Ah, yeah, it's King Barton. I remember. I remember the pain of 4-6-1. <laughs> Definitely do. 
Uh, this counter attacks can stun. I would wonder how cool it would be to run a, like a Rui Scepter on him. But he just doesn't have the survivability. That is the problem with most of those heroes, just not having the survivability to really do something in those fights. Um, though having like stacking like some control precision or some stuff on him, that would be quite nice. Ah, we can. I really don't want to speed that up. Okay, so that was the first one. Element <laughs> obviously with the good win, and then we can see the main fight, and that should be it. So we have the faster Mockman here, uh, faster um, Aspen here. That is something I would have expected. Honestly, would have expected. Um, you want him to be fast. Want him to get some um, some. Of a sorry far off. It would have been nice to have a second hero that is faster than that Holmes Young. Like getting that Mockman here faster than that Holmes Young would have been huge. Maybe get a kill or two off. And getting like the the Aspen CC on that Holmes Young. Um, that could have prevented him from doing a basic. And the basic gives him 50 energy and gets him closer to an active. And you really want to prevent that Holmes Young from doing an active if you want to win a fight against the against a, a Holmes Young team with the Holmes Young core team like this, basically. Um, that is mainly one of the biggest things you want to do. And now he already has 50 energy, so what you would now need is some sort of energy drain, um, maybe by the Eos, maybe by the Aspen. Getting a second CC on him will certainly help, depends on what he purifies now. Um, if we can see some energy drain on turn two. Uh, indeed we do not, but we still have these, um, if the Starving Jaro CC on the Mor on the uh, Holmes Young, so that indeed helps us, uh, helps him not doing an active skill, so we can still save, somewhat save. Uh, depends how if we can get an or he can get another CC uh, in this turn on the Star Alchemist Holmes. If he is not able to do that, I think turn three will be his downfall. Already losing the SQH here, yeah, that is not good. Maybe running more defensive imprints on the uh, um, SQH. You're basically only looking for counterattacks. But like, yeah, the the um, the Starkman Storms now bro uh, broke out. He gets the active, poisons the whole backline, poisons the front line. Everything is poisoned and uh, gets the double uh, perceptual disorder on the aspen and the mockman and with that at least basically only three heroes one of them dies instantly and now we have the um the usual damage over time stuff happening and the enemy just lacking the damage to get through this mff and this star alchemist homes yeah and that's basically the downfall if the cc team can't um stop this mock uh, this homes young from doing an active then the fight is basically over. And that is the hard part. That is also the RNG. That doesn't work every time. That doesn't work every time. I think it would have mainly helped if the Mockman was a bit faster. Or if some other damage hero was fast. That would have indeed helped. So, let's take a look at it. The Mockman did some good damage, but I really feel like it was a bit slow. Maybe upgrade it to T5, get the extra speed, good speed attack stone, S6 speed attack stone. Uh, in a maxon that could help that would really do it and then the fight would have been a little bit closer uh, like that that was still a pretty decent win by um by alan and uh, i feel like a well-deserved one at that so with that we are finishing group two congratulations again to alan and the other containers here and then we are just going to go for group one a uh, group one with franco car and daiko and actually both losing losing to super god both losing to super god i had to take a sip of my coffee here i'm getting trolled in chat i see by a guy called wrecked <laughs> that is indeed Cool. That is indeed a troll account, but I like it. But I like it. Reminds me a bit of the... Uh, do you know Kriparian? Kriparian the YouTuber? He always had those Kriparinos in his chat and they were always doing some stuff. I don't know if that's still the case, but there was like a Skipperino Kriparino that was uh, would post the time to skip his intro and stuff. <laughs> that was quite cool. 
that was quite cool. So, uh, honestly, some pretty cool things happening here. We have Balls, which is a quite a cool guy as well, also from Core. Um, he lost to Holy Homer, another strong player. But the main thing really for me is um, Super got winning against Daiko. Daiko is like the guy. Oh, Daiko is in chat. Look, Daiko is in chat. Uh, Daiko is the guy that paten uh, patented the move to just set one team. He didn't do that this time. Where is the filthy... Uh, there it is. Uh, a filthy Star Alchemist Holmes team, uh, even though it's quite a good one. It has won many seasons, actually, and many IDA champion titles. Uh, fighting against Super God here, who set the same team, basically. With an A minus Ezra, something really nice. Yes, we do! We watch the embarrassment from the Franco and Daiko losing here. So. Uh, that will be the first thing we watch. We will watch the main fight of Daiko vs. Supergod, then Daiko vs. Franco, and that will be interesting. I mean, how did you lose, lose that, mate? That, oh yeah, that, that is really a problem. Like, that can happen quickly. If you set a really weak team, and... Ah, oh, yeah, Supergod. You, you want to have some team that can clear some stuff not like the, the best team, something like that, what I said. Like some, some, some transcendence heroes that you don't really use, some tenant transcendence heroes, something like that. Set that in the first team and you avoid that happening. Because what happened here is basically this fight started, the Ezreal went first, nuked himself to do damage and then nuked, the whole enemy team got nuked. And, um, oh, he nuked himself on turn two, doesn't really matter. Um, the enemy team died before the Astral could revive, and he lost that Astral to such a weak enemy team. And if that happens to you, that sucks a little bit, because now that Astral is gone. Now that really nice A Astral is gone for all the coming fights. He won't ever revive. And that sucks a fair bit. So let's see it. He nukes himself. Kills the enemy team, and now that Astral is gone. Did a whole lot of damage versus uh, some BT heroes. Yeah. So, yeah. Losing that Ezreal here definitely was avoidable because with a few transcendence heroes that team could have been beaten. Um, and now let's watch. Yeah, let's watch the last fight. Last time you were mad at me at setting only one lineup. Okay, I, I, it's all right. It's all right. You you changed it and now it's less filthy. It is all right. So let's watch it. Five versus six and Daiko lost. Daiko's still faster with his Star Alchemist Tones. I mean, like, I'm waiting for the main difference. I probably, I would reckon the carry swipes the, uh, the Star Alchemist Tones. I would reckon that is what happens. The carry swiping the Star Alchemist Tones. Yeah. And now that thing gets locked down and will never do an attack. I reckon that is what happens. Because now we just get a basic from this Diakimus Tomes, this Diakimus Tomes locks this one down, and then the rest can't do anything. Was just a guess, I obviously don't know. Ferrican Vessa locked down. Oh, not even the, the, the Diakimus Tomes got locked down. This was the Ferrican Vessa. But obviously, now with this, um, this um, uh, uh, Diakimus Tomes did the damage first. We have the dot on the back row, and now it's starting to tick damage, and uh, this one was just faster. And another thing that is a little bit weird about the um, about the Star Alchemist Tomsko, it's not always bad if you just have five heroes on the team. Uh, the reason for that being, if you have just five heroes on the team, you use less charges of the, of the Star Alchemist Tomsko. You use less charges because you don't... Um, the, the enemy can't hit six heroes, you can just hit five heroes. So that helps a little bit. In a sense, so it's not that bad. You had indeed, there is indeed some use to having no hero or like even a five star carry, something that dies instantly. And there we have the damage over time. And yeah, I think the main advantage was that one carry swipe. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> That's like the 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 second time, the second time at least I say that a carry swipe decided an IDA final. <laughs> interesting enough. Carry like really a strong hero. And we will make a video about Carry. We will make a video about Carry in the Force War boss fights because I, I uh, used her in nearly all boss fights against those Force War bosses. 
And I p think people now really underestimate her. I said like, you want, you want transcendent heroes because they can provide a lot, but sometimes it's that one little ability that a normal hero can provide. That energy drain from um, carry that is much more useful than any transcendent hero you could place in the team could ever be. And you can see it here, the impact a single carry can have, just denying that enemy that single active skill that would have otherwise started a huge damage over time effect that would have lasted for like six rounds. So that is huge. Uh, have we seen a team without Vesa? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think everybody used Vesa. Vesa is huge. I would have predicted actually that we see less Vesa. I would have predicted that we see less Vesa. The thing with Vesa is um, you now have Ezreal, and Ezreal can easily reduce the healing effect of a Vesa to near zero. So that is something. I think Daiko would have won that if it wasn't for that carry. If he had just more luck with the carry and would have gotten that Star Alchemist Holmes uh, active skill, I think he would have had a chance. But then again, you really want your Ezreal to kill himself. And his Ezreal really didn't do that. He just didn't. He's now dead, but um, if he had died earlier, if he died in like turn one or something, um, he could have denied all those heals those enemies got. And uh, I feel like that was something that also decided the fight. That was also something that decided the fight. Uh, recovering for that team, even though I don't think Daiko's team did too much damage. Like later at the end now, yeah, there is damage. But it just took way too long for Daiko to get to the point where he really could inflict damage. I mean, like, we have this small comeback here from the Ezreal. Can he do something? No. Get slaughtered, right? No, slaughters himself. Okay. Yeah. The sign of a long fight. Like, heroes you wouldn't expect to do a lot of damage deal suddenly deal a lot of damage, like that Mystic Fairy Freya and everything. But still, the silent winner of this battle this carry. Uh, Aika says, carries busted. I use two of them for almost every boss and I'm 600 plus on all, but mage. Uh, I still have to improve on that those bosses a little bit. I did 700 priests today. Um, I still have to do some more. I, I, I prioritized priests because I thought I could improve there a lot, but I have to improve the other ones as well, especially the, the second one, the CC one. I have 480 on that or something, and didn't uh, I want to do it 660 or 700 or something on that as well, or at least 600 plus. Um, yeah, and those those heals, those huge heals, those could have been avoided if that Astral killed himself a little bit faster. I'm not sure what Daiko did with him, but uh, I feel like this, this hero really is better dead than alive. And I think you should look into that. But, well deserved win for Super God here. And uh, now Super God versus Franco, second to last fight here. Let's take a look at, wet, at that. Uh, Franco, where is your main team? There is Franco's main team. Interesting enough, this time the Astral, I, I reckon the Astral still died, but he revived, because this team is a little bit stronger than what Daiko said. Um, and then we have this one. Also, the strategy for clearing the boss from lowly. I thought you did it yourself. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Had to troll a little bit, Aika. Had to troll a little bit. So, Daiko here with the burst team. Yeah, I ran, I basically ran something similar as this. Not with the SQH, but this was what I ran last season and I noticed yeah, it doesn't really do well against those teams. If you can't get a kill on like turn one with the uh, with the Mockman and you can't really kill like the the, the Star Alchemist Holmes or the Ferrokin Vesa, uh, then you just don't win. We can do double speed here because that is, uh, that is sadly, that is pretty pointless. Um, those just uh, guys just get too tanky afterwards and there is just no way you ever win this. Um, what really helped me and my team survive a few more of those is um, is getting the Starwing Jara. Getting the Starwing Jara, getting some CC in there, CCing the enemies down, uh, that helped a lot. That really helped a lot. Um, HSL can't beat 393. Um, I was just thinking why. That is because of the Holmes Young, right? 
I probably have problems with the Holmes Young. Yeah, I got pretty close. It's just a matter of RNG. I can do 660 or something. Uh, that is that is indeed possible. Uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem. I wasted some time. I did 593 or something on the first days on the um, on the first boss, and then only later discovered that it was kind of a bit stupid because I didn't get the next threshold. If you do 593 at 600, you get more loot, not at 593. So that was a little bit stupid. Yeah, and basically now it's uh, the same thing that happens to my team regularly is happening. As well as stripping the heal effect, now your heroes can't heal anymore, and then you get chipped down by the damage over time effect every round. And uh, the the SFX that could usually deal some damage is permanently seed. The Mockman is not really tanky, and uh, you just have no chance. It just takes a few rounds to lose, which is uh, which is sad. Not really doing himself any favor with the SQH, killing the Astral here. But that's the game, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's just no chance. And just no heal. You could see it just right here. The reduced heal effect plus one heals. Yeah. And with that, it's over. Super God vs. Franco car. Sadly, even though this team did a lot of damage, just couldn't bring the damage to the heroes that needed to die. So sadly... No win for Franco here. Maybe look into Starving Jaro. That has helped me quite a lot, actually. Uh, last fight, not Wreck versus, uh, I don't know. It's Super God versus S. Peter Nim. Um, Super God, we saw the team. Pretty good. Holmes team. And here we have a Starving Jaro CC team with an A Aspen. Uh, you still get points, though. Yeah, you do. But I feel like we have a limited amount of attacks. So focusing on thresholds um, feels more worth than using your uh, fighting difficult bosses or more difficult bosses that are beyond thresholds. So I always focus on thresholds. I take one day, two days, three days, focus on a threshold, try to clear it. And if I do that, then I go to the next boss and try to clear another threshold there. And that has worked well for me so far. I still have to improve on some, even though I'm not like in the, I think I'm not in the top 10 right now. I'm not even in the top 10 right now, um, but I have bosses that have a lot of potential. I have bosses like like the second boss with five, uh, 483, I can go to 600 there easily. It will be possible, no problem. And there are some more where I can do this and um, those improvements, that will help a lot. Uh, so let's watch the main fight here. Main fight coming up. Oh, going with the quick starring genre. Sneaky. Well, if that works out, you are indeed in a good position. That is a little bit of a risky move. You go with the fast starring genre. Two fast heroes, one feeds, one, uh, and then the starring genre. And if you get some good CC, you are basically set. And that can lock down teams like mine pretty well. Like if you have, for example, the Mockman, and uh, he CCs the Mockman with the starring genre. That can bring you a world of trouble. That can really bring you a world of trouble. And now he has just three heroes left and he's starving Jara Core doing his mad, uh, magic and he's seeing all those heroes. So that is pretty good. Um, the problem with starving Jara teams often is that if they face all damage reduction or damage reduce from uh, Mystic Fairy Freya and then Aronia, they often kind of lack the, the killing power. And if you then have a little bit of damage over time and they run demon belts, they start dying. So you basically just need a big uh, Astral and that guy can be dead and still deals a lot of damage and uh, they still fall together. They can't kill those three heroes because that is a super tanky combo, um, even though the Star Alchemist Holmes is gone and the Astral chips down the enemies every single turn. Yeah, and you can see the Astral here, as I said, dealt the most damage even though he was dead, and then killed them slowly. So that was really unfortunate. And uh, sadly, that is the point and the reason why I don't run uh, Rogan, but instead have like a Mockman, something that can really deal damage. Have an SFX and put those in here and try to combat that. Of course, that makes me weaker against certain teams as well. Like this team, for example, has a decent chance of beating me. But um, it's always a little bit like st uh, stone, paper, scissors. And I I say that in the wrong order every time, right? I don't know. In Germany, it's uh, stone, stone, scissors, paper. Is it is in Germany. Stein, Schere, Papier. Stone, scissors, paper. In America, stone, paper, scissors. I don't know. Scissors always plural because it's two. It's weird. Yeah. I think I can do seven twenty on warrior. It's very close. 
Uh, I still have to look into Warrior as well. It's 594 for me, so I think I can I can improve there as well. So that was our last winner, Super God. Super God, I'm not sure he got his first or he got some before. I'm not really sure, but it was a very good win, proper win, nicely done. And with that, we basically watched all of the fights. Uh, was a little bit longer than I thought, but we watched all of the fights. Good amount of viewers there. Peaked at like, what do we peak? 120 viewers peak. Uh, what's the highest danger you can face off? I mean, like I can show, I can show a bit, right? We can go in here. I can show a bit. I can still do my attacks. <laughs> Don't you worry. Earthway, collect that. Uh, and I can show this one. I mean, like that is something I will make a video about. That is my highest uh, difficulty cleared yet. That is 700. Um, that is the highest I did. I mean, it's pretty decent. 700. Did it with this team. As I said, we are going to make a video about carries because carries what help. Forget the Exxon Spock. Don't forget. How do you even say that? Lizard and Spock. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I will do a video on this one. I will do a video on this one. We'll do it a bit later. I want to improve my teams a little bit more. I want to do some more of those um, and see what it's really about and what the best strategies are. And then I will show you guys the video and give you guys some tips and tricks on every single boss. And uh, I think we will do it like this because it won't help you this time, but it will help you next time. So that is quite nice. Um... <laughs> Wonder if Ithaca and Della army can go crazy here. Well, not against those bosses. Too much damage. Have a look at auction house display. You are gonna get more people interested. Man, that would be bad if somebody with a lot of viewers in stream would now look at the auction house um, um, display face. What could be in there? What could be in there, Ica? What is in there? Anybody want to have 100,000? <laughs> that is insane. SS tier for 6,000. I mean, like, that guy's surely going to take it out of the auction house, isn't he? I mean, he's surely going to take it out of the auction house. That is such a filthy thing. Sometimes people keep that in, but then again, a lot of the times they take it out in the last second. And you stand there watching the auction house and think like, yeah, I just bought 6,000 starry that I otherwise wouldn't have bought. So I feel like for a lot of people that is more of a trap than really any actual way to do it. And then you you get like Sorby Toll with his macro and he will buy it. <laughs> now nah, you, you, you think you will get it, but you won't. Sorby Toll is like filthy lucky and will buy it. Yeah. Yeah, as, as like uh, Ika said, there will be 20,000 people that already have the story like me that don't need to buy anything and they will bid on it. So, guys, please don't think you can get it. Um, there is 90% chance the guy will take it out before there is, it even hits the auction house. And even if he doesn't take it out, the chances that you get it are super low. So it's really quite a shot in the dark and not worth the investment. That is quite cool, though. I like the, I like that. I mean, like, it's it's still a decent deal if you could get it for bidding. But I guess I guess that is enough for today. Is that what a decent roll? Uh, not a 76,000 roll. So that is about it. I would say we had a nice stream. Short stream today. I thank you guys all for watching it. And I think we will see us in the next one.